Look up at the night sky. Take a long, deep breath and really look. What do you see? What feelings does it evoke within you? A vast darkness scattered with distant lights. An endless expanse punctuated by pinpricks of brilliance. For millennia humans have gazed upward, their eyes drawn to the celestial canvas above, charting stars, naming constellations, and weaving myths around those distant suns. They sought to understand their place in the grand scheme. Yet beneath all the stories and science, the calculations and the folklore, one question persists. A question that burns in the human heart. Are we alone? Is there anyone else out there? This question shapes our understanding of life, influencing how we perceive our own existence, consciousness, and our place in the cosmos. It's a question that touches upon the very essence of what it means to be human. It has echoed from ancient philosophers, resonating through the ages to modern astronomers who continue the search with ever more powerful tools. With today's technology, we see farther than ever, peering into the deepest reaches of space and time, yet the silence only deepens. The vastness seems to amplify the quiet. Is the universe truly empty, devoid of other voices? Or are we simply not listening the right way? Are we using the correct instruments, the appropriate methods? The answer could redefine humanity, fundamentally altering our understanding of ourselves and our place, confirming our solitude, the idea that we are utterly alone in this vast expanse, or revealing a crowded cosmic neighborhood, teeming with life and civilizations beyond our wildest imaginations. If we are alone, truly and utterly alone, we bear the weight of being, carrying the torch of consciousness across the cosmos, the universe's only spark of consciousness. A heavy burden indeed. Every star would remind us of a silent, empty stage, a constant reminder of what could have been. But what if we're not alone? What if the universe is teeming with life? Even a single microbe elsewhere would revolutionize everything. Science, challenging our fundamental understanding of biology and the origins of life. Religion, forcing us to reconsider our place in creation and philosophy, prompting us to redefine our ethical and moral frameworks. Life would be a cosmic rule, not an exception, a fundamental property of the universe. And if intelligent life exists, scattered across the cosmos, the night sky would become a tapestry of countless stories, a symphony of voices echoing across the light years, not just our own. A universe brimming with perspectives and experiences beyond our comprehension. The silence would be broken, shattered by the cacophony of alien tongues, and our story would join a much larger cosmic saga, a grand narrative that stretches across galaxies and eons. To truly grasp the enormity of the question of whether we are alone, we must first take a step back. Consider the sheer scale of the universe, a scale so vast it challenges our everyday comprehension. We're talking about distances and quantities that are almost impossible to imagine. We orbit a single star, our Sun, a seemingly unique and vital source of energy for our planet. But our Sun is just one of approximately 400 billion stars that make up our home galaxy, the Milky Way. Each star a potential sun for another planetary system. And our galaxy, the Milky Way, is not alone. It's just one of an estimated two trillion galaxies in the observable universe. Think about that for a moment. Two trillion galaxies, each a swirling island of stars. Each galaxy is an island of billions of stars, burning brightly across unimaginable distances. And around most of these stars, there are planets orbiting like our own around the Sun. Planets, once thought to be rare cosmic accidents, are now known to be incredibly common, practically the rule rather than the exception. Indeed, current estimates suggest there's at least one planet for every star in the galaxy. That translates to hundreds of billions of planets within our Milky Way galaxy alone, a truly staggering number. But not all planets are created equal. Life, at least as we understand it, needs a very specific set of conditions to arise and thrive. This brings us to the concept of the habitable, or Goldilocks zone. A region around a star that's not too hot and not too cold, but just right for liquid water to exist on a planet's surface. And liquid water is currently our best and most promising clue in the search for life beyond Earth. These habitable zones aren't rare. They exist around a wide variety of stars throughout the universe. 
conservative estimates suggest there could be as many as 40 billion Earth-sized planets, rocky worlds like our own, residing within the habitable zones of their stars, right here in the Milky Way galaxy. That's 40 billion potential chances, 40 billion opportunities for life to emerge and flourish. When you begin to truly consider these numbers, the focus of the question inevitably shifts. Instead of asking, is there life out there? The more pertinent question becomes, how could life exist elsewhere? The universe is not just filled with stars and galaxies, a vast and empty void. It's teeming with potential homes, with countless worlds that could potentially harbor life as we know it, or perhaps even life as we don't. When you consider the sheer scale and abundance, the odds seem to overwhelmingly favor the existence of life beyond Earth. The search for other worlds, worlds beyond our own solar system, is one of modern astronomy's greatest adventures, a quest to understand our place in the cosmos. It's a journey driven by curiosity and the fundamental question, are we alone? For centuries, exoplanets were just theory, a tantalizing possibility debated by philosophers and scientists alike. But that all changed when missions like NASA's Kepler came along and changed everything. These groundbreaking missions transformed speculation into concrete discovery. Kepler watched a single patch of sky, a seemingly insignificant area teeming with countless stars. It detected planets by the tiny dips in starlight, those subtle flickers that betrayed the presence of a world passing between us and its star. These dips occurred as planets transited, as they passed in front of their stars, blocking a minuscule amount of light. Suddenly, exoplanets were real, no longer figments of our imagination, but tangible worlds. And we found thousands, a veritable explosion of new worlds revealed to us. We discovered hot Jupiters, gas giants scorching close to their parent stars, super-Earths, rocky planets larger than our own, and even planets orbiting two suns, Tatooine-like worlds with twin sunsets. But the most exciting are those like Kepler-186f, planets that hint at the possibility of life, Earth-sized, in the habitable zone, that Goldilocks region where temperatures could allow for liquid water. Possibly with liquid water, the key ingredient for life as we know it. These aren't just data points on a graph. They're destinations for our imagination, beckoning us to dream of interstellar journeys. Now, scientists can analyze some exoplanet atmospheres, peering through the cosmic haze to understand their composition, searching for biosignatures like oxygen, a gas produced by plants on Earth, or methane, another potential indicator of biological activity. We're on the verge of remotely detecting from light years away life's fingerprints on distant worlds, a monumental achievement in human history. Every new discovery adds to the puzzle, bringing us closer to answering the ultimate question. Rocky, Earth-sized planets in habitable zones may be the rule, not the exception, suggesting that Earth-like worlds are surprisingly common. The universe seems adept at making the ingredients for life, the fundamental elements and conditions necessary for life to arise. The Goldilocks zones are plentiful, offering ample opportunities for life to emerge. So, if the cosmic kitchen is fully stocked, brimming with the ingredients for life, where's the evidence of life? Why haven't we found it yet? Where are all the chefs? This is the Fermi paradox, a question that continues to challenge and inspire us. This leads us to the Fermi paradox posed by physicist Enrico Fermi. If life is so likely, where is everybody? The numbers suggest the galaxy should be teeming with signals and signs of alien civilizations. Yet, our telescopes hear only silence. No megastructures, no alien empires, just the quiet hiss of the cosmos. Scientists have many theories. Maybe life is rare, or the leap to intelligence is nearly impossible. A great filter. Perhaps civilizations destroy themselves before reaching the stars. Or maybe advanced beings have no interest in us, or deliberately avoid contact. The universe could be a dark forest, where everyone stays silent to survive. Or perhaps they're already here, beyond our perception. The possibilities are as vast as the universe itself. The silence remains a profound mystery. While we search the skies, strange stories unfold here on Earth. None more famous than Roswell, 1947. After a storm, 
Rancher Mac Brazel found bizarre debris in New Mexico, metallic sticks, foil that snapped back to shape, and odd eye beams. The Air Force first announced a flying disc had been recovered, then quickly retracted, calling it a weather balloon. The sudden reversal fueled suspicion. Why the change? What about the strange materials? Decades later, the government revealed the debris was from Project Mogul, a secret balloon program. But for many, this was just another cover-up. Witnesses, including Major Jesse Marcel, insisted the debris was not of this world. Roswell became a legend, a symbol of hidden truths. The case remains officially closed, but the questions linger. Was it a crashed alien ship or just Cold War secrecy? The mystery endures, fueling decades of speculation. Roswell is the enduring myth at the heart of UFO lore. If Roswell is America's UFO legend, Rendlesham Forest is Britain's. In December 1980, near two US Air Force bases, trained military personnel witnessed strange lights descending into the forest. They found a glowing, metallic, triangular craft, silent, hovering and bathing the woods in white light. Some reported time distortion and a static charge in the air. The next day, investigators found three impressions in the ground and elevated radiation levels. Two nights later, the phenomenon returned. Deputy Base Commander Charles Holt recorded the events as they happened. He described pulsating lights, objects performing impossible maneuvers and beams of light sent to the ground. The official explanation, a distant lighthouse. But the witnesses, all trained observers, remain adamant. It was something else. The Rendlesham case remains unexplained. It stands as one of the most credible and baffling UFO encounters. The mystery persists, challenging official explanations. Cases like Roswell and Rendlesham fuel suspicion of government secrecy. Why do official stories change? Why the secrecy? This isn't just conspiracy talk. Astronauts, military officials and world leaders have voiced similar concerns. Some say the truth is hidden to prevent panic or protect society from a reality we're not ready for. Others believe it's about technology. If alien tech was recovered, it would be the ultimate advantage. In recent years, the US government has acknowledged unidentified aerial phenomena, UAPs, and released videos of objects defying known physics. A Pentagon office now studies these sightings. While they stop short of saying aliens, it's a major shift from decades of denial. The government now admits something real and unexplained is in our skies. The question is no longer if UFOs exist, but what they are. The veil is lifting, but the mystery deepens. We stand at a crossroads between the silent cosmos and the persistent stories of encounters on Earth. Astronomy tells us the odds favor life elsewhere. The silence is the puzzle. Meanwhile, Credible witnesses and official documents suggest something unexplained is happening here. Perhaps the answer to the Fermi paradox is that they have already found us. We have clues, but no definitive proof. The greatest question remains, are we alone? The journey to truth is personal, a balance of skepticism and wonder. What do you believe? Are we a cosmic accident or part of a vast community? Is the answer in the stars or hidden in plain sight? The universe is waiting. The choice for now is yours.